If you're on YouTube for the bikini girls and the thumbnails while the boyfriend's in the water shooting rest, this video might not be for you, but uh, if you like a bit of carnage... Woof! Everyone, hope you're doing well. My name's Luke, and welcome to this aquatic rehab spearfishing vlog. Me and Ralph got to the boat ramp up at Omaha, and David Copperfield must have been in the locality because the bung simply vanished. Important uh, question: No one up at Omaha would have a bung that would fit that, would they? Because, as you can see, there's a hole there. If you've got good banter, you just distract him and I'll just run out there and I'll just <laughs> sneak the bung out of that, but they won't mind. Now, luckily Darren, Jacko and Soph were there and they felt sorry for us and basically said, hop on and we'll take you out for a dive. <laughs> so this dive's got some real hectic shark action, so um, stay tuned for that. Uh, lots of kingies, ballfish, and bits and pieces, and um, remember, please like and subscribe to help the algorithm so that I get more than five views, and uh, also, please stay to the very end for some extremely important information that I have to tell you guys. G'day everyone, now I'm really glad you could join me on these two dives, uh, this is two separate dives over a couple of days uh, in roughly the same area. Now, my six-year-old son's just started watching my videos and I've realized that I gotta cut the pirate language out. Um, so firstly, I'm down on this weed line. As you can see, there's a few fish hanging around, a few Juvie Trevally and stuff. Um, I wanna get a bit of action going to see what's around, so I get this leather jacket for a bit of bait. Um, do a bit of chumming and surprise, surprise, look who's turned up. Um, just a Juvie Bronzy, but always a cool sight and um, yeah a few inquisitive poor eye there now after a full hour in the water of not too much happening um, i'm starting to get a dry mouth i'm peeing a lot i'm realizing that i'm beginning to get dehydrated so i'm straight back to the boat and i'm trying to stay on top of my hydration the acidity buffering that happens when you free dive the dive um, response the heat you lose a lot of electrolytes and a lot of uh, fluid so you've got to stay on top of that now I get straight back into the water and Darren's got a really good sized kingfish on. I had a chat to him about this and he doesn't mind me mentioning it. He had technical difficulties during a ablation surgery and now he's sort of limited to very top water diving. I'm sure he's going to be open enough to chat to anyone that reaches out to him. But you know, you never know what people are going through. And um, you know, he's the kind of fellow you turn up to Weddy and he'll always throw the kettle on. So yeah, um, I, was, I was pretty happy to see that, that fish get boated. That's beauty fish. Okay, so I'm back in the water looking between these sort of sandy weed patches in the current looking for boar fish. I'd seen quite a few spooky ones, but I uh, managed to find this one here that was quite happy to be shot. Um, they're either extremely spooky or they'll just sit there and do nothing. And as you can see, this bronzy comes in and shows a little bit of interest. Um, while I'm here, I'll let you know what the gun is that I'm using. This is a Debono 90 centimeter roller made from Burmese teak and it has carbon stringers, a graphite track, and um, an Hermes trigger with an AR handle. The whole setup is uh, around repeatability and um, basically like all of those uh, uh, marksmanship principles. Um, if you're into these guns, please get at me on my Instagram, Luke Likes Ledges, and I can help you guys out there. Now, a kingfish has come in on all of the commotion from me shooting that boarfish. Ralph gets a nice top down shot on it, and this bronze whaler is just not having a bar of it. Now me and Darren are on a very similar wavelength here, he's back in the water straight away with a camera to film them and um, I'm thinking 
snapper because of the, all the free chum that we've just got out of that kingfish being munched. Um, go down and have a look. There's about a 10 pound fish there. Let that one go and continue look, looking for boar fish. I go back down and I'm hunting around through the weed again quite close to the boat and find this nice boar fish doing the same thing, just chilling out. But this time um, I was a lot less fortunate because this bronze whaler was just all over it. By the time I'd reached the surface to get my uh, recovery breath, Shark basically decided to annihilate the fish and then invited all of his friends in to come and keep um, grabbing the head off me, dragging it away and, um, you know, using it basically like a lollipop. Honestly, for a ball fish. My main thing here is dyneema awareness in this situation because that stuff can be deadly if the uh, dyneema gets wrapped around you and a shark takes off and has a bit of, uh, let's say, a spear or something caught in its mouth. And um, yeah, you can see them all coming in here and they get pretty rocked. I'm very confident here that the boys have my back behind me because they're quite experienced so I don't really have to worry about what's going on behind me. Um, my job is just to um, look in front, try not to lose my spear, um, see if I can retrieve that and see if there's anything retrievable on the actual fish itself. Okay, that was just carnage, but I'm going to get back in and try to film a little bit more. Darren's kind enough to take us out today, drop us in on the um, safest, safest spot. spot in the yeah, no pop golf. Here. No sharks here, Luke, you'll be right in the spot. Absolutely, no worries. So after all of that, we had a big tide change. I think we hit the high and um, everything just calmed down and the fish sort of left. Uh, we still had heaps of bronze whalers lurking around. Um, I went down for one more look and I mean, there must have been at least half a dozen just lurking around on the outskirts and in the weed and sort of all around the show. So um, we decided to head back early and um, I have to give massive props to Darren, Jacko and Soph for taking us out because we wouldn't have been able to go out because we didn't have the bung. And then um, went back to, um, to Darren's and uh, Jacko ended up even being kind enough to fill it for me. Now after that, about a week later, we went back out with Ralph and uh, this dive was a little bit different. Huge schools of kingfish and um, quite a few boarfish around as well, which was really good. So first things first, back in the water, back down onto the weed line and um, I look for a cohero to shoot simply for chum just to basically see who's in the area and what's going on. Um, it can be quite a good idea just to get some food going, just to uh, rock things up, see if anything wants to move in on the action, Kingfish Snapper, John Dory, uh, etc. So we moved up the weed line and Ollie ended up shooting this big female boarfish which ended up popping off his spear. And um, I was down there when Cody reshot it and he also had it pop off, which was um, just, crazy unfortunate so um, I push along into the weed here and you can actually see the fish just lurking and uh, managed to get a nice long shot on it with the Dubono with the 7mm spear and uh, landed it for him so yeah a bit of a pin cushion but got the job done Uh, now you can see Ollie pretty keen to get his fish back here. He's obviously paranoid that he might lose it because uh, it's got off uh, a few times um, I've tried to 
I'm trying to tell him not to reshoot it simply because the kingfish might roll in on all of the action and I knew that uh, the shot was good and that's exactly what happens as soon as he gets the fish back into the float boat. Um, enormous school of fish, Cody's already shot one and I go down and I look for a nice fish to try, try to get a good kill shot on because this is a very sharky area. So me, Ollie and Cody have all gotten kingfish out of that school here and uh, we're bagging up everything and getting everything nice and cold. Now poor Ralph had been bringing the boat over to us while we got onto that huge school. So um, he's back out there and he's searching for it and um, the school's sort of gone. I get straight back in the water and the boys move about 100 yards off and uh, the kingfish school comes back to me. Now I don't need another kingy here so I'm looking for boarfish and I find them right under the kingfish school. There's two big females and a smaller male and I thought to myself bugger it I'm just going to crack the male because the two girls are obviously full of eggs and um, someone else can you know broadcast fertilize them and uh, yeah basically play the game that way. Um, bit of bit of imaginary water karma or whatever but you can see as I'm landing the boarfish here the kingfish are just everywhere so a uh, very epic sight crazy day huge school of kingies there they just shot a nice uh, male bori between two females females can get um, their eggs would lie somewhere else. One of the other boys dropped a nice boar and uh, I shot it for him so he's got it back. And then a uh, big school of kings come through and rolled one over, so pretty good. Now I threw the boarfish guts off the back of the boat here and um, the current had picked up, everything had changed. All these little snapper up in midwater and sharks just everywhere. So, um, Another good thing was that the Kingfish School did move back in so Ralph could get his chance at a shot. However, we're going to have to do some serious guarding work to uh, get the thing landed. Now, the good thing is here is that uh, Ralph ends up getting a, a beautiful kill shot on a fish. I'll leave shortly. Another one rolled. Cody decides he wants another one in amongst the sharks. And um, 
he does a kill shot as well, so absolutely ideal. Sick. Two kingies stoned right in front of them. Um, yeah, so this is absolutely perfect. I mean, the carnage that would have unfolded trying to land um, uh, kingfish that weren't hurt or switched off around, you know, half a dozen sharks is just, uh, yeah, it's just not worth the hassle. They'll just absolutely annihilate them. So, um, yeah, the boys did a really good job here. Um, this is actually another De Bono gun, but this is a non-roller gun, so good to see it uh, shooting accurately there. Six bronzies in there, that's cool. Both of them get away shooting the king because they both stoned them. He just stoned his one as well. Oh. You guys are lucky, man. Yeah, that was hot, eh? Fucking insane. Did you get, the, did you get video? <laughs> Me? Yeah. A bit of yarn anyway. Like a shark on your ass there. Yeah, someone back on the boat decided to gut their fish while I was sort of down current of the boat trying to get back up to it, which wasn't ideal for me, but uh, let's not talk about that. So, did you have a good day, Ruff? Oh, it was bloody amazing. Managed to pull a kingy out of a pack of sharks. <laughs> got a John Dory, got a Bori, got some pitchers. Can't complain. So, yeah, I was just saying all the boys here have families, so kids, missuses, all the rest of it. Here in some wall. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Hopefully the footage comes out alright. Alright crew, hope you enjoyed that video. Um, the extremely important info that I had to tell you, I can't actually quite remember what it was. So, But I'm glad you made it this far. Um, please check out the How to Spearfish series, the whole entire series. All five videos are on our Patreon. The link is in the description as well as 56 informational vlogs. It helps me a lot. I've got two kids. I've just come out of two years, three years actually more of um, terrible uh, health problems with ME and the, the symptom set of fibromyalgia. Extremely glad to be able to be making content again for everyone and doing podcasts and bits and pieces. So uh, massive thanks for hanging around and I really do hope that you enjoyed the video.